Here we are with Pipistrel's Tina Tomazik and Tina is going to talk us through doing a proper pre-flight inspection on uh, this aircraft which is a Virus SW but the same applies to all aircraft. Correct. Um, we'll do the pre-flight check or the daily inspection um, as it's written in the POH or the flight manual <coughs> for some parts of the world. Um, so we will see what there is to check on our aeroplanes. In fact this is a Virus Shortening 100 equipped with an electrical constant speed prop <clears throat> but the checkup is not different for any other types, including the Alpha. Uh, the stations we are going to do in course of this checkup uh, match perfectly. The first station is the engine cowling. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do. The engine cowling has uh, three openings. The one on top serves for uh, cylinder head cooling. There's a radiator in there. And you have to make sure that it's clean and it's not damaged. It sometimes happens that dust, dust or insects uh, contaminate it. So make sure that these openings are clean. Here on the right hand side we have the opening for cooling of the cylinders. There's an air duct also makes sure it's clean and tidy. Here on the left the aeroplane is equipped with a smaller radiator which serves to cool oil and the Alpha has also one extra radiator on the bottom <coughs> which is where the oil cooler is normally. Make sure that all the um, all the screws are fastened, but none of them is sticking out like that, so that's an improper position. You have to make sure that they are fastened properly. The is uh, all about checking the fuel openings we have here and the landing light. If it's equipped uh, with it, uh, make sure that it's fastened and it's pointing the right way. And the lens is clean, so you have the most light coming out of it. Here on the bottom side of the cowling, there's uh, two openings which gives you access to the fuel drain. It's a good idea to drain the, the, the fuel system. Basically there is a little screw which you turn, leave out about a cup of fuel, making sure that the condensate is coming out. This is directly linked to the gas chelator which is just beneath the cowling. Make sure you close it after having drained it and make sure that also the fuel discharge valve which is right here, is in the closed position. You know that it's closed, you can see it through this opening and also there is no dripping. That's uh, basically it. On the same station we can also check the nose wheel. When the aeroplane is a nose wheel addition, uh, the, the whole aerodynamic cover needs to be attached firmly. So must the, uh, the fairing and make sure the movement of the leg is proper. We can do that also when we check the prop. It's a little bit easier than rocking the aeroplane over here. So on to the next station, which is the propeller. Um, Pipistrel aeroplanes come equipped with uh, various types of props. Um, this is basically the, the most advanced one. It's an electric constant speed um, called the SR3000 by Woodcomp. Make sure the spinner is nice and even, that it's not damaged. Make sure that it's attached firmly. Don't rock it too much. It's a sensitive piece, but still make sure it won't fly off. Check all the screws top and bottom and check how the blades are attached. Uh, with the mechanical propellers people usually do a mistake because they want to turn both the propeller blades at the same time. Of course this will happen very easily, it's, uh, it's done to do that. So what you have to do is to grab one blade firmly and then try to move the other. This is how you determine the actual play in the blades. So if I grab the prop here, this is then how you try to move the other and the free play can be up to three millimeters here on the trailing edge this is as much as it's allowed if you have more then you shouldn't be flying and consult your uh, service center as we are here already uh, this is a nice station where we can check the movement and the suspension properties of the nose wheel when your aeroplane is a nose wheel simply stick your foot down below and grab the prop in order to check the firmness of the strut this is how it should be like starboard side of the fuselage. Some aeroplanes are also equipped with the optional oil hatch. Uh, you open it up and you check the oil quantity. You can directly reach into the system and open up the oil bottle which is right beneath the opening and check the oil quantity as per Rotex specifications. The dipstick is easily accessible and you can see how much oil you have inside. This was just a quick interpretation, not a proper oil check. We'll show you how to do the oil check slightly later on. Uh, because it involves uh, turning of the prop about 10 times in order to circulate the oil through the engine. Um, we're here at this aeroplane which has just come in for a 1000 hour check at Pipistrel uh, to demonstrate how you properly check the oil quantity. Uh, some people don't know it, it's a little bit peculiar procedure with the Rotax, but it starts by uh, undoing the cap and removing it 
place it to a position where you actually can see it so you don't forget it and uh, make sure that the dipstick is still there and just uh, let it uh, hang in the oil bottle freely. Then move yourselves at the propeller and start turning the prop in the proper direction, so the direction of the, of the usual motion. The master switch is off and um, usually it takes about 10 to 15 rotations, it depends on the actual ambient temperature and uh, you will hear this burbling sound. This means that oil, all of the oil has been now circulated into the engine. It's a dry sump system, not a wet sump. And uh, once you've heard that burbling sound, it means that the indication of the oil will be proper. Can you turn it again so we can just hear that sound? Yeah, you can do it again, absolutely. That was it. You can, yep. If you're not sure, you can always continue to turn and the burbling sound will come back. After you do that, you check the dipstick in the usual way, indicating uh, between the minimum and the maximum. That's what your oil quantity should be. Station number five will be checking the connection between the wing and the fuselage. This is the sensitive part. The load points go into the metal cage, transferring the, the, the forces between the wings and the fuselage. Make sure also that the tape is installed fine. If it isn't, your aeroplane will be whistling. Uh, look for any signs of damage here on the trailing edge and uh, on the A-pillar as well as the whole Lexan and the rivets which hold it in place. Also make sure to check these two hinges which attach the door. There is a pin in them which you can remove when you want to fly doors off. Limit speed is 60 knots. Uh, make sure the pins are installed properly, not to have any surprises in the air. Uh, the last point of this checkup is the undercarriage. The undercarriage is one single U-piece spar and it's attached with two main bolts on each side. By design it's constructed in this way so if you have a hard landing it will always fail down the bond line which is in the middle. So look for damage in this area as well as below in the same area. You can be a little bit clever and check the same area on the other side as you are kneeling and do the same. Uh, when you go around the aeroplane also for the left side of the undercarriage. As you are here, make sure the fairing is attached. Four bolts on this side and one central bolt on this side. Checking the air pressure of the tires should be trivial as well. Center of the wing, we're here at the leading edge. This is where you actually see uh, the condition of the leading edge the best towards the fuselage and also towards the wingtips. Look for any sign of damage, maybe hangar damage, maybe there was a bird that somebody hit in fly than you weren't aware of. This is where you see it very nicely. Here we also have two other elements which need, which need checkups. The pitot tube. Uh, aeroplanes can be also equipped with an AOA or heated pitot tube which looks slightly differently. But in all cases make sure it is attached properly. Uh, make sure that the openings are clean. The pitot opening and the static opening. And uh, this is it apart from the pitot tube. Of course don't forget to uncover it before you go for flying. So this is how it should look like. Uh, on top we do have the opening for the, uh, for the fuel, which is at the same time the fuel vent. Um, this little tube should be pointing straight back, so that when you are flying the airflow pressurizes the fuel tank and prevents leakage. Make sure it's also done tightly, that there is no leakage and that these two little grooves here are actually clean of any contamination. We're here at the wingtip. Uh, at the wing thing you can check numerous things. Uh, most obvious is the condition of the underside, which you can easily see, and the top side of the wing, which you can also easily see by pushing down on the wingtip. You, you should also check the free play of the main load points in the sense uh, forward and backwards, and up and down as well. So grab the wingtip firmly, most back, most forward, and rock your aeroplane <coughs> up and down, left and right. If you feel some free play, uh, it can only be a cosmetic thing. You will hear some click click noises once you fly but uh, if the free play is excessive make sure you insert the spacers which came with the airplane at delivery between the, the fuselage and the wings. Also if your airplane is equipped with wingtip lights make sure that they are still here uh, that they look the business and that they are clean and shiny and elsewhere are equipped with flaperons so we don't have separate flaps and, uh, and uh, ailerons, it's all the same piece which is attached on six hinges. Um, important is also that you keep this gasket here uh, always touching the surface. The gasket is actually curved 
So when you have the deflection down or up, it's always touching the surface and this is what you should check uh, along the whole span of the flap run. Make also sure that the movement itself is uh, free of obstructions, smooth and that the whole flap run is undamaged, especially here at the trailing edge. When your aeroplane is equipped with air brakes, this doesn't apply to the Alpha Trainer, uh, you should pay some attention to them as well. You can easily open them uh, if you have the cockpit handle released and hanging down freely by just uh, grabbing the edge and opening them up. You can do that from the inner edge or the outer edge as well. Um, the air brakes assembly is constructed out of three main elements. The drive, which are the big tubes uh, in light color, the top plate, which is mounted on hinges, and the actual drag plate, which is black. Um, you will see that the top plate is mounted on hinges. This basically prevents opening and closing of the air brake uh, when the whole system is moving together with the wing in turbulence. Make sure that these springs are firm and they, that they return the whole top plate towards the main drag plate. These two pins are actually lead pins and prevent the top plate to be opened up front first. Make sure the movement is, is smooth and make sure that the deflection or the opening of both of the air brakes is equal. Um, as we come back to the fuselage, um, it's important to check a couple of things. First, it's the connection between the flaperon and the wing. If you deflect the flaperon fully upwards, uh, an opening appears on the bottom side, just there, where you can check the main attachment bolt and you can check that it's also not being tampered with. Important is also to check the condition of the parachute rescue system straps if your aeroplane is equipped with it and make sure the seal around the actual parachute opening is uh, undamaged so, it, so no water can enter. It's actually the humidity that uh, can temper with the safety of the actual canopy and the rocket so make sure that uh, there's no water intrusions possible. This is only a cap for the control system. Make sure it is attached properly and make sure the seal around it also uh, doesn't present any gaps, so again, water couldn't go in. Check all the antennas. This aeroplane is fitted only with the comm station. If you have an ELT antenna, you will find it on the, on the other side, usually in white. But uh, as for all antennas, make sure that they are, uh, that they are attached properly and uh, they are touching the surface of the aeroplane perfectly. Continuing the checkup is basically the tail boom condition and check all this transition area that's free of cracks, free of any damage, especially the leading edges here, again for some hangar damage or maybe uh, hitting some uh, debris uh, during landing or takeoff. This particular aeroplane is also equipped with a static tube, total energy tube for the total energy variometer. Uh, glider pilots will know what it's all about but uh, some people don't recognize it and they don't know what to do with it. It's basically like a pitot tube sitting uh, backwards. There's two little openings here on the tube, make sure that they are clean and make sure that the tube is attached. We always produce the tube so it is completely detachable for hangering. Um, it's equipped with two small gaskets, so make sure that all these openings and all the gaskets are clean and lubricated and then reinsert the tube uh, at your discretion. People sometimes ask, whether the tube should be pointing up or down. It doesn't really matter. It's only the fact that these two little openings need to point backwards, which they do in either case. Pipistrels have a T-tail, so it's a little bit easier to check up the condition of the horizontal, of the horizontal tailplane. Uh, when you are here at the tip, uh, make sure you check the horizontal tail in the same way you would check the wing at the wing tip. So rocket up and down, forwards and backwards. Check all the hinges which are exposed here. Um, check the drive. Basically the elevator drive comes from this U piece here and it's not part of the elevator. It's actually part of the fuselage assembly. Make sure it's fine. Make sure the deflections are smooth and make sure that there is no free play on the elevator itself in the direction left and right. So this aeroplane is perfect. Also important are the drain holes. Uh, the horizontal tailplanes are equipped with drain holes, uh, otherwise they would be pressurized. Um, there's no way for water to get in, but if you fly high, uh, air from the lower, um, lower altitudes could inflate the tail and cause damage to it. So make sure that the uh, drain holes, which are, or the vents, which are marked with green circles, are clean. The last check of the first half of the aeroplane is the rudder. 
Um, similar to the flap rounds, make sure that the gasket is touching the, uh, the rudder at all deflections. So take it left, take it right. At the same time, you check the smoothness of the actual movement. Uh, make sure that the little trim pieces that compensate for the engine torque at low speeds are attached and make sure that the control system is attached as well. It's easiest to do that by deflecting the rudder to the left and to the right. To the right. Alternatively, check the attachment of the actual ropes, metal ropes here and check the retaining springs which are here to neutralize the position of the rudder once you let go of the pedals. So this is uh, an area to pay attention to and in conjunction with the rudder make sure that the tail skid is actually aligned with the tail boom with the direction of the aeroplane if it's not uh, it will act as a giant trim tab and the aeroplane will be uh, automatically turning either to the left or to the right which is something that you obviously don't want to do so this was the first half of the aeroplane fortunately the aeroplanes are symmetric so the pre-flight or the daily inspection is the exact same on the other half of the aeroplane as well. Tina Tomasik, thank you very much You're for this welcome. introduction. You're welcome.